Hello parents, my name is Scott Gemini. This is the Common Core Math 6 open house presentation, which will be shared with parents uh, this evening, September 3rd. I do want to put this together. I know that some of you will be unable to attend due to the scheduling conflict or whatnot. I also will be uh, probably not present for at least my first period session. So I did want to make this available online for any parent that misses me today. And they probably want to talk to me. Usually math is a popular person to speak with. So I want to kind of share everything that I'm going to present today, just in case I'm not here, it can be shown in class, or also if you're not here, you can see it at your at home at your own leisure. Just to give you a little background on myself, I earned my undergraduate from John Q University back in like 1896. I have a postgraduate from Cleveland State University. I have multiple teaching experiences. I've been fired from none of these jobs, just to let you know. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland, I taught there for two years, moved back up to Northeast Ohio, taught three years in Cleveland at the grade levels that are indicated, then moved, to, then taught in Euclid for three years. Uh, two of those years I was strictly mathematics. Uh, the one year I was self-contained, taught all content area. And then in Avon Lake here at Troy, I've been bouncing back and forth between fifth and sixth grade. I believe for the past three years though, I've been a sixth grade mathematics teacher. Uh, give me an idea, the curriculum and common core. Uh, the curriculum uses the Holt Middle School Math Course 2 textbook. You will not see a textbook come home. I will occasionally post uh, textbook pages on the blog, which you'll you be able to access with the, your students 21, whatever those last six letters, or first six letters of last name, and first initial, and then that at the AL student, just for copyright. Uh, linked here are all the different things of Common Core that we are responsible for. So if you have this, you'll be able to show this and, and watch this and connect it at your leisure. But those are, if you want to think about the different strands we're responsible for. Ratios and proportional reasoning, the number system, expressions and equations, which move into the next chapter, uh, and then number systems will be chapter three. Geometry is later later in the unit, and obviously, or chapter, excuse me, in the year, and then statistics and probability. We're working on that right now with the statistics part, with data analysis, uh, and graphing, and, and data representations. Grades and weighting. A student's end of the quarter grade is based on four types of assignments. We have assessments, uh, quizzes and post tests. Those account for 85% of your child's grade. Projects, uh, in chapter or end of chapter, those uh, comprise 10%. Con skills, which you see almost daily, that's 4%. And evening practice, that's usually those packet pages, that's 1% of the grade. You can see it's very heavily weighted towards assessments. I feel that those are a nice culminating activity for the entire chapter, and those are where the most emphasis is put on. Kind of helps that if you want to think about high stakes testing, get your child prepared for later on, especially with the SAT and ACT and things of that nature where they have to be on point for different assessments and be prepared. And this is just the beginning point. Quizzes, always worth 10 points to Gribbuk Wizard, unless I'm doing Socrative, which is an online assessment, using a website called Socrative or Socrative. Uh, those will always be worth no more than five points. Uh, these quizzes will be rigorous. Uh, no standard multiple choice questions. You will on so a Socrative or Socrative C multiple choice but on the quizzes that we assigned, it's not the typical multiple choice. If it is a multiple choice, there'll be multiple right answers, not just one. Post tests, always with 100 points in Google Wizard. These always come at the end of a chapter. Our first post test will be less than a week from today on September 8th, covering chapter one. They are typically a front and back of one page. We like to get these done in one class period. If not, kids will be required to come back during their recess slash lunch to complete the task. We do not like to have assessments go over a course of a day. It, it throws off the, the validity of the assessment. Uh, and predominantly, the, system, uh, the skills on assessments are application-based. You will not see what is four times three or you know what is 10% of 100. It's all application-based. Uh, we try to really make it real-world-like uh, in, its, in its creation and its actual implementation. Communication. I, hopefully you've been receiving my emails. If you've not, or you want another person to receive emails, please send me an email letting me know the other person you'd like with their address. Uh, I usually have, I have Gradebook set up so as soon as the grades end, input in the Gradebook Wizard, you will receive an email letting know of the skill. I uh, usually put a little uh, scenario or piece that explains the, con uh, the assignment. Uh, emails in Google Calendar are constantly updated. I have my um, I have my Google Calendar on my blog, so you can always subscribe to that, I believe. And then any concerns you have, phone or email, I typically try to address that within a 24-hour window. So if you email me 
you know, at a certain time, I, I try to give myself 24 hours to respond. I hope I'm better than that, but that's the kind of window that I, I utilize. Now, Khan Academy. I know why so much Khan Academy should you mean? Well, kind of, it's great practice for the online assessments that we are mandated to complete this year. All students take the MAP test. We will also take the park assessment, and all those are online. High focus, high reward. With Khan, uh, as in the past, probably when all of us were in sixth grade, you would have 30 to 40 practice questions, and many of them were repetitive. Con, you only, if you get the first five right, or you get five right in a row, you are done. So that high focus, you really focus for those five questions, the reward is I'm done. Uh, you are always welcome to continue to go back and review. And the way I do con is it is assigned, and I assign it, and I put that date of that time of 2.30 in the morning. The reason being, I don't expect your kid to be waking up at one o'clock in the morning completed. I'd rather them complete it the night before, then when I input grades at around 3 a.m., you will receive an email before your child goes to school, or you should, saying, hey, you missed something. Uh, that way it has, your child has the opportunity to sit down at breakfast or whatnot or before they get on the bus and, and get it done. It's just a little reminder. It's, it's not a, a, a punitive penalty. Uh, you can always make up con skills. You have until the seventh week of the quarter. At the conclusion of the seventh week of the quarter, and all quarters are nine weeks, I will not allow you to make up any missing con skills, but you, so if there's something missing right now, you have ample opportunities, ample time to complete that con skill. Uh, I love con because it provides a teacher when a teacher's not there. There are videos, there are hints. Typically next to every skill, if you look to the bottom right, underneath the answers there, there are hints you can ask, and there's also videos you can watch. You can watch the videos without penalty. You can ask for hints without penalty. Now. The thing with hints is when you go to put the answer, you may have it right, but if you saw hints, it will not count as being right. If you watch the video and then put in the answer, it counts as being right. Uh, Khan is aligned to the Common Core. It is free, and it's very easy to access. You can access it anywhere you have Internet access, which makes it great. Uh, just to let you know what I see on Khan, this is a student's progress report. You see a bar graph here. This relates time and the number of energy points. This is just a picture, but I could hover over this and it would give me a display of what skills they completed, how many minutes they worked on each skill, and if they watched any videos, you can see the darker blue there. And these little here are little badges that they earned for different levels of success. Another thing I see for your child, and I can adjust this to the far right here as far as the time period, but I can see what skills they did. Again, I can hover over this and it'll tell me how many skills they did, how many they had right, how much time they spent on it. So all this data is very valuable to me, and I let this be known to your child so that I'm not trying to keep anything from them, uh, but it just makes everything very clear, and then when there's any discretions, I can then quickly snap a picture like this, email it to you, and say, well, you were right, ma'am, or sir, your child did this, it is my mistake, or your son or daughter may have made a mistake, they did not complete the task, or they only had three right instead of having the five right in a row, and it's easy to fix. This is what I see when I wake up in the morning. Uh, this is obviously exploring mean and median. And this here is all the students who did not begin the task or have only done a, a few skills, a few exercises, and it doesn't really count as being either struggling or practice. When their name flips over to here, that means they earned at least five right, which is excellent. And then the goal here is to get mastered in all skills, and they can accomplish this by doing and completing mastery challenges, which I've modeled in class. Uh, it's just a way that Khan has built into its system to constantly provide that review for skills previously done. It's that, that spiral. It never allows us to forget what we've already worked on. Uh, obviously, if you're watching this video, you can't really ask me questions in person. You can always, you're always welcome to email me any questions, comments, or concerns that you have. And again, I, I try to give myself that 24-hour uh, window there to respond. I try to be good with my emails, parents, because I want to develop that transparency between home and school. That's why I almost provide maybe two email, too many emails. Parents are probably sick of seeing my email address pop up from scott.jimmy, like, oh, no, this guy again. Uh, you only have about 170 more days of those from me. Um, but after that, I promise I won't send that many emails once your child is out of sixth grade. Uh, again, any questions, comments, concerns, always feel free to contact me, whether it's email or phone, whatever is easiest for you. My break, if you want to say, I go straight through from 8.05 to 11.33. I then have about 45 minutes to an hour where I have a little bit of wiggle room where I can accommodate parent conferences and whatnot. Also, recess and lunch. I know kids love to go off for recess. Um, 
you are, the student's always welcome to come in during recess to get extra assistance, or if they just want to get a head start on their evening practice for that night, they're always welcome to stay in for recess or lunch. They can eat in the classroom. Um, but again, it's not as a, I don't want to view it as a punishment. It's more of, hey, I want to get ahead of start on, on things. I want to be diligent. I want to be uh, task-oriented. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy your evening. Take care. Bye.